So on the day that the patient comes in on their period, usually they call on the first day of their period and they come in on the first, second, third day of their period. When they come in, we perform an ultrasound. The purpose of the ultrasound is to look at the uterine cavity, the uterus, and to determine if there are, it is enlarged, normal size, is it in the right place, is it shifted to one side or the other, which determines potential for adhesions or scar tissue in the pelvis. Are there fibroids in the uterus that can affect fertility maybe? Um, are the ovaries normal? Are they enlarged? Is there cysts on them? How many follicles are on the ovary? We call that antral follicle count. And that number of follicles is very important because as the number of follicles drop, the number of follicles available to be recruited for fertility purposes decreases. Um, we also want to know if those ovaries on ultrasound are mobile. If we push on an ovary and it doesn't move, this is suggestive of scar tissue, even though I cannot see scar tissue on ultrasound, either something is holding it or, you know, from like a fibroid not allowing it to move or scar tissue not allowing it to move. But that's significant information because we want to get pregnant and part of getting pregnant involves the ovary, the fallopian tube, the uterus, and sperm. And so the pelvis is very important. And that would be the first time maybe that we find out someone might have scar tissue or could potentially have endometriosis. I understand that you have a uterus and two ovaries probably. But we want to know the details about this, the, the anatomy as it relates to fertility. Uh, so the ultrasound is very important. Uh, the normal antral follicle count, which was the number of follicles at baseline on a period, is supposed to be 15. On that day of the ultrasound, we gather information. And if that information says that the person has one follicle or three follicles or four follicles, in that situation, that is going to be a very difficult situation because that means that uh, they have less reserve in their ovaries. They have less follicles. And it gives a glimpse at the potential blood test problems we're going to face with the hormone tests we're going to do. And the possibility of not being able to do certain treatments or their success rates might, be, might fall because of just that one ultrasound showing less follicles. We do blood tests on that day. The patient's asked to come in on a specific time period because it's very critical for us to do those blood tests then. Usually day two, day three, the latest day four. We perform a blood test called estradiol FSH. We call it E2FSH. And that FSH test is follicle stimulating hormone and it stands for, uh, it, it basically is a hormone produced by the brain that then is released into the bloodstream and goes and therefore stimulates the ovary to make follicles, follicle stimulating hormone. Now, that was the test that we always did. In our clinic and many other clinics, they do other tests. We combine the person's age, FSH results, and then we add two other tests, inhibin B and anti-malarian hormone. Not everybody agrees that these tests are needed. And hopefully in the future, people will agree that it is but we feel it is. So it is a significant piece of information that we look at, but it's not the only piece of information. We look at the age, the FSH, the inhibin B, and the AMH to kind of look at the ovarian reserve or the ovarian factor in this patient. The last blood test is anti-malarian hormone. It's a hormone also produced by those cells, and the lower level of anti-malarian hormone is associated more with decreased success and lower number of follicles. There are a few other pieces of information that we would be wanting to get, uh, and that would be to get the sperm analysis from the male partner and to schedule an x-ray, and those are all done on that visit. We schedule an x-ray on day seven to 10 of the cycle, and that's done on that visit, and we schedule a semen analysis prior to the follow-up appointment, which is done on this visit. So this visit is basically to take the consult, implement what was the plan for the consult at that visit, and then make sure that all the loose end tests that need to be done are done. The patient is at this point given a follow-up appointment. We try and answer all the questions, uh, but we don't have all the answers yet. So that's the purpose of that follow-up appointment. But obviously if a patient has a low number of follicles, they might be leaving the office a little bit disappointed and full of questions. 
but we've had patients who have a low number of follicles but great FSH and inhibit B results who end up getting pregnant very easily. So just that one piece of information does not make it uh, where it's going to be a major problem or not. It's a co combination of all the information, the entirety of the information that can give a big picture.